Kia ora, in the headlines, Greece now has a new caretaker government following the political party's failure to form a coalition. The lingering political uncertainty saw nearly 900 million euros withdrawn from bank accounts on Monday. Fitch has further downgraded the debt-crippled country, warning of a probable exit from the euro currency if next month's elections produce an anti-bailout government. Meanwhile, Spain's borrowing costs have risen after 16 banks across the country had their credit ratings downgraded by Moody's. In local news, a former Bridge Corp director's lack of remorse has led to a heavy prison sentence. Justice Venning today announced that Robert Roost will join Rod Patricevich in jail, serving six and a half years for misleading investors. He, he still doesn't think he's done anything wrong. How on earth can that be an expression of remorse? How, how can he say that he was doing his best for investors? Fellow director Peter Steigrad has escaped jail and has instead been handed out a sentence of nine months home detention. He must also complete 200 hours community work and pay $350,000 in reparations. The woman known as one of the Westpac runaway millionaires has been found guilty of theft, money laundering and dishonesty. Kara Haring fled New Zealand in 2009 with former partner Leo Gao after Westpac Bank mistakenly deposited $10 million into an overdraft account. She spent 22 months on the run before being arrested when she returned to Auckland in February last year. Jerry Brownlee has defended the Earthquake Commission against heavy criticism, pointing out the department has ballooned from 22 people to 1,200. The Earthquake Recovery Minister says it's time for private insurers to play their part in Christchurch's repair and rebuild. Now that these issues of apportionment, which are, have been difficult, uh, and assessment methodology are resolving in a very short period of time, I'd like to see a little bit more uh, action from them. Last year's law change making membership for student associations voluntary is presenting a bleak outlook for some unions. Stefan van Heerden from Massey University's Albany campus says only 19 students have paid the $100 membership fee so far. This year's membership fee is actually a, a step down. $100 is not a lot for something that you know you can use all over the year. If more people join up there we can offer a lot more. Around 125 non-sworn positions in the police are on the line. Commissioner Peter Marshall says while there will be no change to the police budget in the coming year, the force is making modest reductions to internal budgets. He stressed there is no intended decrease in the constabular headcount and in fact there are plans to enhance frontline service delivery. There's resistance to the Education Ministry's proposed closure of four residential schools for students with intellectual and behavioural problems. The money saved would be used to support those students in mainstream schools, and Richard Chalklin of the Public Services Association agrees with the plans to a certain degree. But at the expense of closing of residential schools, that's where we see it as a bit extreme. What we'd like to do is to slow things down a little bit, set up the service, do it right, don't rush it. Last month's Warbirds over Wanaka International Air Show has been hailed as a resounding success. Chairman Murray Cleverly says analysis shows the air show is expanding its attendee demographic and is worth around $20 million for the area. He attributed the success to community support, the large volunteer base, fantastic weather and hosting the Air Force's 75th anniversary celebrations. And finally, tributes are flowing in for 63-year-old disco queen Donna Summer. The five-time Grammy Award winner died overnight following a battle with cancer. The singer's family members have thanked her fans and say it's her faith they will remember most about Donna Summer. Well, that's it from our newsroom. Have a safe weekend. Moriora.